Good day YouTubers, welcome back to another video with the electrical guide. Today I want to show you how to add a receptacle to a wall where there isn't a receptacle. Today we're doing it in a really easy spot. We're doing it just behind this one. Now I want to hang my Dyson vacuum cleaner on the wall like so. And I've got nowhere to plug it in. So we're gonna add a plug here today. Okay, so these are all the things we're gonna need to use today. I've got my retrofit box here. I've got two outlets here. I'm actually gonna replace the one uh, that I'm about to open up because it's got some paint on it. It's a little damaged. So I'm gonna put a nice clean one in there. I've got my circuit tracer there, my client circuit tracer. I've got F clips to the top left of my level. And I've got fish tape as well with some wire in case I need that fish tape. Probably won't though, because it's right on the other side of the wall. So let's get started. First, I'm gonna use my multi-driver to take the faceplate off this. Now, of course, I've already turned the breaker off, but let's just verify one more time. Yep, it's dead. So I'll just fast forward the video while I open this up. Okay, now that I've got this open, I'm just gonna verify one more time that the power is indeed dead before I disconnect all these wires and get rid of this old outlet. I'll speed up the video again one more time while I take this apart. Okay, now that this is all opened up, we can go around the other side and we can make a hole for our new receptacle. Okay, so we're on the other side of the wall here. I'm just gonna try and pick a spot to put my new receptacle I've got here, my Stud finder, let's just try it over here. Wow, looks like no stud at all. Let's try it one more time. Wide open. Yep, sounds like wide open. Okay, so I'm gonna get my box now. Now I just happen to have uh, a deep box. I don't usually use deep boxes for standard outlets, but it's what I had laying around, so I'm just going to do a little bit of prep. I'm going to push this, call these ears up just a little, tighten that screw, make sure it's nice and straight. And I'm going to open these up just a little as well, push that forward, make sure it's sitting nice and straight. Put that screw back in. And I'm also going to verify that the screws that hold the side plates in are nice and tight as well and because the box is out here in my hand i'll pre-loosen some of the ground screws in the back i only need one actually so I'll loosen one now i'm ready to make my hole i verified there was no studs so i'll pick some more random let's say uh over here ish and i'll use my level just to check that my box is straight and I'll trace it out with a pencil. Just a rough trace, doesn't have to be too precise. As long as you get the corners really, the rest kind of falls into place when you start cutting. Go underneath as well, and the bottom corner. Okay, very good. And you can just double check your lines if you need to fill anything in. You can use your level. Just finish that bottom line there. Now we're good to cut. Now it's really important when you cut, always do it on the top or bottom first and cut sideways. That way if you encounter a stud, you can turn around and go back the other way and finish your hole. Whereas if you go from top to bottom on the sides first, you have no idea where the stud is because you're just going up and down and then maybe you might hit one, you know, going in one or the other directions and then you're in trouble. So we'll start in the bottom corner. Now I'm only using the very shallow uh, portion of my blade. I'm not sticking it in too far. I don't want to nick any other wires in the wall. And um, you see I did across first and now up. And I'm just following my line maybe a little bit outside it. Okay, I'm actually going to keep that piece just in case. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the other side and I'm going to stick some 14-2 wire in my box and try and fill up some of this cavity so I can reach it from this side. So let's go back to the other side. All right, I'm on the other side of the wall here. Got my wires bent up out of the way. I'm just gonna remove this bottom clamp in the existing box. 
which exposes the tabs underneath. And I'm gonna push one of them down with my finger. Luckily, the side it's attached is on my side there. Okay, and I've bent it so that it's completely down and flat now inside here, so I got lots of space. And I'm gonna push my wire down through there and sort of to the right, because I think my, my outlet's just on the other side here. I'll push a bunch in, I'm not too concerned about how much. I do want some on the other side to work with after, so push in maybe about a meter's worth, leaving lots here still. And we'll go back to the other side, see if we can find that wire. Okay, back on the other side, sticking my hand in. Oh yeah, I found it, that was quick. So I got my wire here, that's awesome. You wanna make sure that you have you know, a good portion of wire here. Um, at least, I'd say this much, you know, kind of from thumb to finger. I have pretty big hands, so I'd say at least 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters. And now that we have this, we can land it in our box. So we've got those same tabs on this one. We can pop this out as well. Actually, if I'm gonna put the box in like this, let's say we do this tab down here. You can see now how it bends back and I have it like this on my box on the other side of the wall. This time, I can just fold this right down. I'm gonna bring my wire up into here. Pull out lots, lots and lots here. And I'll tighten my screw at the back of my box. And because this is a deep box, I've got tons of space, tons of wire, so I'm gonna cut it and it's already in the box. Sometimes I do it before, sometimes I do it after. Doesn't really matter. What I'm doing is just cutting the insulation off. So I don't even cut the full way, I just cut a little bit and I pull off the rest. Okay, I can cut that off inside. Okay, we got our wires. Now I'm just gonna quickly put my ground on the back screw that I pre-loosened. So I'll uh, speed the video up while I do that. Okay, got all my wires ready. My ears are pulled out to the max already, the most towards the front of the box they can be. Now I'm ready to put my box in the wall. Now I'm just gonna cut out a couple notches for these tabs, the top and bottom. Now my box, Hole might need to be adjusted slightly depending on some of these bubbles on the side, we'll see. Okay, that fit in pretty nicely. Pretty snug, that's good. Now I've got my F-clips, they're sold on a pack of two. You just break there in the middle, you can just twist them off. Pull the sticker off. Now usually, these things are longer on one side and the long side goes up. These ones look to be about the same on each side. So it doesn't really matter if you put them like this or like this. Either way is good for this particular kind, but usually short side goes down so that it can't fall and the long side goes up. So I'm gonna slide these in the side, making sure not to drop them in. Okay, there's my first one. Just gonna hold it so it doesn't fall in. Be a little bit of a fight. If they're a little bit of a fight, that means your hole's not too big. These ones even hold themselves in. That's how I know this is a pristine hole. So I'm gonna bend my wires up out of the way. Make sure my box is straight. Center these f-clips so that they're basically floating in the center of the box and I'm going to bend them in a little bit with my thumb to start and then I'm going to take the top one and push it in with my needle nose there and it creates a nice tight hold one on one side and one on the other side that and same 
with this one. Like so. Now the box is pretty snug already, but to make it really nice, we're gonna need to use our side cutters. And our side cutters are gonna crimp those corners a little bit. So I'm gonna grab my side cutters and show you that. Okay, so I've got my side cutters now. And I'm actually just gonna pinch the corners with my side cutters twice on each one, top and bottom. And what that does is really get those F clips to grab this box really nicely. Just make sure that your tabs are pushing all the way. We don't want them to touch any of the screws on the side of our receptacle after. And that's it, this box is looking pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna terminate this receptacle, of course, in good practice, ground, then neutral, then the hot side. And I'm gonna speed that up because I've done a video on this already. I'll link it at the end. Now I don't always tape receptacles, but when they're going into a box that has metal F clips on the side, I usually do just to be safe. And when you tape this, you don't want to pull the tape too tight because it can shrink over time. Just kind of set it on there. So over the screws, not pulling it tight, just setting it on. Obviously not going over my mounting screws, right? And we're good to go. You can tuck this in. Screw this on. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Fantastic. One side done. Okay, we're back on the other side. Now it's really important that we do the other side first. That guarantees that when we're terminating our wires on the other side, they're definitely not live because here's our other end still attached to nothing. So the other end gets completely finished first, and then we do the side after that. So I'm gonna cut this, give it a little longer than my wires are already here. And I'm gonna strip this as well with my knife. Okay, now I'm going to put back my clamp that I removed in the beginning. Now in this case, I've already used both uh, green screws in the back here. So I'm gonna make a joint with another piece of copper and a marette. So I'm just gonna do that quickly with my two copper exposed here and this one as well. So I'm gonna strip the rest of these wires now and I'm going to terminate my new receptacle. Now I don't usually like to use the holes in the back, but I've got three black and three white. So one, two black, three, one, two, white, and three. Okay, and now the best way to do this would have probably have been to do joints with a marette on all the white and black and the ground and bring tails out but this box would be absolutely jam-packed. So I cheated a little bit today and I used the screws and the hole in the back to land these. Um, and it's still pretty full. So I'm gonna tuck all these wires as nicely as I can back in this box and remount this guy. Now I'm not using tape this time, so I'm being very careful to keep my ground wire away from the other screws on this receptacle. Okay, so I've got a brand new receptacle here now. Looking a lot nicer than the original nasty paint covered uh, old damaged one. And I've got one in here. So let's go turn the circuit back on and test out 
see if my Dyson will plug in and charge in here in my closet. Okay, circuit's back on. Now I can't use this anymore because this is a tamper-proof receptacle and I can't push this in. So now I've got to use this guy. There we go, two green lights, that's good. Let's test the one on the other side as well. Two green lights. We're good. All right. I can plug in my Dyson here. Awesome. And I can come up here. And we are charging. Thanks for watching another video with the electrical guide.